What's up guys? In today's video, we go deep sea fishing and we catch a blue beautiful wahoo. Today's video is Wahoo Cast Clean Cup. As you can see guys, we've been out here since very early this morning, trolling around with no bites yet, unfortunately. But we did see another boat actually catch a wahoo and bring it into his boat. So that was pretty upsetting, but at the same time, good sign. I know that the fish are here. So we're just putting in our time on the water. We're checking our baits about every 30 minutes just to make sure there's no weed on it. And we're just gonna keep grinding until we get one. Day one, not done yet. All right, y'all, putting out the lures. We just switched up our color on our lure. We just selected this bright orange one, which is a high-speed Wahoo trolling lure. We're gonna throw this out. You can see here that we have no cable. We're using 200-pound mono attached to it. Keep the boat in gear, throw it out. We've got about a 30-foot leader here. And then that connects to this inline weight for trolling. This is a 48-ounce weight. We're gonna put this back. Then I'm gonna send it out. This is our short, this is our actual short line. So this one's gonna stay closer to the boat and down deep because of the weight. And on the other side, we're gonna put out just a lure. And on the other side, we have got the famous Ballyhoo. Oh my gosh, that did get a bite. That had a, we did, this line did come out earlier, like for like half a second. And I just see teeth marks on the actual skirt now. So it did get a bite early this morning. So this is the famous cowbell from Ballyhood Lures. I love these. This is a proven method. We have caught many wahoo on this particular lure. So we're going to throw it out. You can see another, we don't have an uh, actual uh, wire cable. Throwing it out on a 200 pound mono. That's a pretty heavy weight, a uh, pretty heavy lure by itself. So this is going to be up on top and it's going to be much further back than the other rod. So we're going to separate them in the water column. And as long as you do this correctly, and you send out the first one and then you send out the longer one next, you should, you'll should you not have any tangles. So this one's going way, way, way out. All right, nice job, Dust Sizzle. And then uh, again, we take turns driving for like half an hour, an hour each. And we're gonna go between like 12 and 14 knots, just kind of zigzagging. So the lures go up and down, varies the speed on the lures and the depth of them. And really just driving as rapidly as possible, between like 100 and 300, but you know, wherever you think the fish are, and, uh, yeah, that's we just the gist tell those people to catch a fish in front of us, so yeah, kind of know the area. Yeah. We, we tend to catch them more going into the current for some reason, so yes. we don't care which way we go, current or down current. Yes. So uh, let's get back at it, Tizzle. My turn Who's to driving? Drive. My turn to Your drive. turn, all right, Ladies all right. Luck. Ladies luck, we do. Let's do it. Day two out here, not giving up. We are now checking our lines out here a couple hours with no bites yet, but putting in our time. Patience, patience and persistence pays off. That's what Brian always likes to say. And basically we check our lines about every 30 minutes, just in case, even if they don't need it, but we see a lot of weed around today. So we're gonna check them and clear the weed off and then send them back out. So that's a good routine to do.
Alright guys, looks like we got one on. I'm just keeping the boat in gear. Braid coming back. We got braid on, back to the braid. Probably, uh, probably stripped off 100, 120 feet of line. I took off quite a bit of line, but I'm telling you what we're doing right now. We got the boat in gear, and as long as Darcy's getting line, I'm happy. You want to keep as much tension on that fish as possible. And then uh, we're going to switch it over to here, and I'm going to hand line him through that door right there. So it's going to be exciting. I'm gonna probably pick it up a little bit. Okay, go. Wait, wait. Good. Going to put the back down. That's good. What are you gonna do with the wheel? Keep going. guys and I transferred the Wahoo into my 165 quart grizzly cooler so I can get him nice and chilled down because the more cold that your fish is the easier it is to fillet. So he's been sitting in there a few hours so now it's time to fillet him and today I am doing some new pro some product testing with some brand new knives you have never seen me use on my channel and I'm really excited to tell you about them but this is Smith products they've been around since 1886 and they've been making sharpeners and knives since 1886. They're based out of Arkansas, great company, and these sharpeners you might even recognize, they've been around for a long time, you might even have a couple in your house or your truck or whatever. So the good thing about these knives is the price point here. The price point is much cheaper than the competitors out there, about half the price. Their, their knives run from like $12.99 to the highest is $32.99. So an affordable knife for us fishermen out there, and I'm excited to use them here today. Now let's get right into it. Let's get the Wahoo out of the cooler. Beautiful fish. Oh yeah, check them out, ice cold. Beautiful Wahoo. All right, let me rinse them off real quick and we're gonna get right into this. I'm going to show you how I fillet Wahoo, and I'm gonna start on the last side of the fish. Unfortunately, when I was filleting off the first side, Puddin had some te technical difficulties with the camera, so I apologize, but let's get right to this. I'm using their saltwater, saltwater series fillet knife, and it has corrosion resistance. That's why it's coated with black like this for saltwater. So, make a cut right behind the pectoral fin here. You really want a sharp knife, and I'm starting to angle it up towards the head because I wanna get as much meat as possible off this beautiful fish. 
You see how much I how much I cut into the head like that? You really want to do that because you're just missing all of that meat there. A lot of people just cut straight across like so and you're missing all that head meat. So get up there nice and tight, just like so. Then we're gonna turn the knife around and we're gonna work it back down and follow the, back, the uh, actual back of this fish. Just work it underneath. First initial cut. And you see I'm keeping the blade underneath and kind of just like outlining it. It's easier to do it that way. When we get to the tail section here, poke the knife through like that. Oops, sorry. And then we're just gonna cut it right off and get that over with, done. Okay, now the next step is to gently lift up on your filet and we're just gonna basically follow the rest of the backbone and the bones down. And that's why I'm lowering my head here so I can actually like see what I'm doing. And I'm just going all the way to the spine bone and the spine bone sticks out quite a bit. So we're gonna have to go back down over that side. Closer to me so you can actually see what I'm doing. And he's just a longer fish, so I'm like angling him up here so I can see what I'm doing. Breaking all those pin bones by the head. Let's lay off the rest here. And what I'm gonna do. Before I get any crazier and make have this giant long fillet, I'm just gonna make a cut right here. So we can get work with one side and it makes it much smaller and easier to work with. And if you guys saw my uh, black tip shark catch clean cook video, I did the same thing. It's just an awkwardly long shaped fish and you don't wanna be dealing with such a huge fillet. And you wanna do a great job and get as much of the sushi grade meat off as possible. So now I'm going over that, that spine bone and it does protrude a little bit. So I'm breaking all those little fibers and then I'm going to work my fillet knife back down and you see I'm bending it so I can get it in there. Wow, this meat looks so amazing. It's been a long time since I've seen fresh wahoo meat. When we were out there fishing for him, I actually was uh, talking to my dad in my head and I was like, send me, send me a wahoo, send me a wahoo. And the third day we were out there doing it, he did. So it's pretty cool. Um, so check out that beautiful piece of meat right there. Absolutely amazing. That is your sushi grade meat. That is Wahoo. I wish I could share with you guys because it is out of this world amazing if you never had it. But you can see that honestly, before I get any further here, I'm gonna flay off a piece of meat. So good. Wahoo is my absolute favorite sushi fish. It's just out of this world amazing. It doesn't even compare to black fin tuna. I'm gonna skin this piece. It's really hot down here in South Florida. I really wanna get this beautiful meat like right back in the cooler and on ice so it stays perfect. And we can do our amazing cooking portion of this video. So what I'm doing now is just making that little cut into the tail, just like so. And I'm gonna go at a 45 degree angle and we're gonna slab off this whole side. Just take your time, there's no rush. Keep it nice and close to your body. I like to keep my hand underneath so I can feel what I'm doing. Just like that, beautiful piece of meat. And now you can see that the actual bloodline is here and the fish did bleed out quite a bit on the boat but we do have to remove his bloodline because we do not want that as part of our sushi. So I'm just angling it, cutting and then angling down like towards it and then down and I can actually see like the loins here. I don't know if you can see this, but you can actually see like how the loins run. Oh my gosh, so beautiful. That is sushi quality, but you can actually see like the line here and then it angles outward. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm just outlining it as I go. So I save as much of the loin meat as possible. And the same thing on this side, and angle down. 
really want that sharp knife. So you can make a nice, beautiful cut. See that? You can, you can see all those fibers and everything right there. You got it out perfectly, outlined it perfectly. Didn't lose any meat. And now we're just gonna get a little bit left of the bloodline on this side. And that is a piece of Wahoo loin. This one actually looks beautiful. Did a great job. Oh, so excited. All right, so I'm just gonna chop up the loin, get them right back into my grizzly cooler, keep them nice and cold. Look at that. Amazing, beautiful fish. Fish is done. Yum yum. <laughs> Talking with my mouth open. I mean, smooth my mouth full of food. There he is, all filleted up. Did a pretty good job. I'm so excited to eat him later, but this bad boy, he's done with. Now let's go into the house for the cooking portion of this video. Great job, Dr. Sizzle Filet Now Wahoo. Welcome to another edition of Cooking with Puddin. I got another one of my great fan hats. And actually, we've been making sushi in here for so long, it's unbelievable. Look at our sizzle. Sushi master. She's the sushi master. We got Frank here for a big sushi fest. <laughs> Darcy's actually taking the lead today on this sushi situation. Let me bibbity bibbity bop back to three hours ago we started making the sushi, and here's how you do it. Before we can make our sushi, we have to make our sushi rice. I bought the sushi rice at the local supermarket. I have my rice cooker, and I have already pre-rinsed the rice, which is what you need to do with sushi rice to remove the starch. Adding my water to the sushi rice per the instructions on the back of the box. While my rice is cooking, on the stove top, I am preparing my vinegar mixture that will be poured over the sushi rice once it's done. And this consists of rice wine vinegar, sugar, and salt. Going to let it come to a boil, make sure that the sugar gets dissolved, and then I'm gonna take it off the heat. My sushi rice is now done. I absolutely love this rice cooker. And I'm taking it out and transferring it into this glass bowl. Traditionally, you would use a wooden bowl or a bamboo bowl, but I don't have one. Now I'm going to add my rice wine mixture. And this is what is going to give it its consistency and a beautiful flavor when I make the sushi rolls. And the most important part is you don't want to stir your rice, you just want to toss it. After you mix your sushi rice very well and it's very hot, you want to let it cool down, but mainly, most importantly, you want to add a damp cloth to it. Next up, guys, is to cut up our vegetables or whatever else we want to put in the sushi. I'm going to choose some carrots and then we're going to cut it uh, like as long or as wide as this nori or seafood wrap. So this is actually about the same or correct size. I'm gonna cut it super thin. I'm actually using some fancy knives from Connor. He was a sushi chef. All right guys, time to cut the fish. Got a big nice slab of wahoo here. I'm gonna cut some long strips for the sushi and also cut some, uh, just some pieces because it's so delicious. All right, I'm doing the avocado last because they go brown, but hopefully this method I'm about to use will prevent that. We're gonna see. Oh. Icky. Let's try this again. This one's not very ripe, so hopefully it won't be too messed up. A little better. Now you're supposed to peel the skin off. That helps it to stay green longer. It's now time to roll our sushi, and I've got everything in front of me. Starting with the bamboo mat, I have the dark side up and the other side of the bamboo mat is actually like circular shaped. 
And on the dark side, it's flat for rolling. So you always wanna have the flat side up. And pro tip is to wrap it in cling wrap, also known as saran wrap. Um, so that's gonna help it not adhere to the bamboo mat. So I have a half sheet of nori that I pre-cut. There's two sides to nori. There is a rough side and a shiny side. You wanna have the rough side up. Now it's time to add the rice to the nori. First, what I need to do is dip my hands in this bowl of water that I have, and I actually added a tablespoon of unseasoned rice vinegar to it so it does not dilute our rolls. Something like this, and then put it onto the sheet. And instead of like smashing it down, you just kind of want to roll the rice out. And you want to have a layer about two to three grains deep. Next step is to add sesame seeds, and I have tricolor sesame seeds. I'm just gonna sprinkle over the rice. I'm going to be making a roll called an inside out roll because the rice will be on the outside. So what I need to do next is flip it. Then I'm just going to lightly press down. Now it's time to add our ingredients. The most important ingredient is our fresh wahoo. And I wanna put it not right in the middle, but closer to me. A couple pieces of carrot. And the next ingredient is going to be laid out away from me. I'm gonna add a piece of asparagus. Then I'm gonna throw in a couple pieces of avocado. Now it's time to roll. And this is a little bit tricky. It does take some practice, but you basically wanna keep your, your thumb underneath the mat and then you wanna keep your fingers holding the ingredients in their place as you take the bamboo mat and roll it. Um, once I make that first turn, you just wanna press firmly, evenly across the whole mat. And you wanna make sure that rice is actually touching the inside edge, as you can see. And then we're gonna finish the roll. And the same thing, even pressure. And that is our homemade sushi roll. Last step is to cut the roll, and I just laid a piece of saran wrap over it, and this is going to help eliminate it falling apart and just keep it intact while I cut it. And Brian has said earlier he's using Connor's knives. This is my brother Connor, the US Marine, so he is allowing me to use his professional sushi knives when he used to be a master sushi chef. All right, so I'm gonna make a cut right down the middle. And you wanna cut sushi like you're cutting a long log, long strokes. You cut down the middle again. There is our beautiful Wahoo sushi roll. I'm not a professional by any means, but it looks beautiful. We did it guys, look at all the sushi dresses we made. I've been eating it all the afternoon, so I know how it tastes, delicious. <laughs> yeah, I would have had more of a spread out here about double what you see on the plate, on the table right now, and they both ate it while I was making it. I couldn't make, make it fast enough. Now I'll tell you guys, it takes forever. <laughs> it's one of our first times making it actually, but uh, it comes out really good, especially when you got that delicious wahoo. What do you think, Frank? Delicious? The wahoo is out of this world amazing as sushi. Spicy, what's the spicy sauce? Spicy mayo, basically. Ooh. It's just a combination of mayo, real mayonnaise, and sriracha. Yeah, it all it, it tastes the same as any in the store, just maybe you know you got a little practice before you make it pretty, but they're so pretty it doesn't matter what the food looks like. Oh thank you. Cheers. Nice. Well, we would not be able to do this without you guys. That is for sure, you guys watching. So we really do appreciate it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this Couch Clean Cook. And majority of the utensils and things that you saw me use in this video, I'm going to have in my Amazon store. Please check that out if you're interested, like the rice cooker and all that good stuff. That is a lifesaver. In the past, I've always messed up rice, and the rice cooker saved my life. Um, so yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, we really do appreciate it. Appreciate you and love each and every single one of you. So let's go ahead and wrap it up. All right. Until next time. <laughs> Until our next adventure. Follow, follow your, your dreams, dreams and, and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. Frank, did you say anything? All right. Well, he's not wearing a mic, so you can't hear him. He's wearing the loudest mic we have. <laughs>